evening, Mark Leibowitz. Give him a big hand. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, before I get started, I just want to, uh, you know, give a shout out to the women in my life uh, for giving me the inspiration to finally stand up here on the stage. They really gave me the motivation to see what it's like to be able to talk for more than 30 seconds at a time. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, let's hear it again for the uh, performers that we've had so far. Aren't they great? So uh, again, I'm very, very excited to be here. I have, uh, this is actually something I've kind of been wanting to do for a couple of years now. Um, get up and have some time up on stage at the coffee house. And now that I'm finally up here, I'm realizing that it's probably going to be a lot harder than I thought. Um, I think it might have been actually a little bit easier if I decided to be like a pizza delivery boy or something like that. Because if you think about it, uh, as a pizza delivery boy, no matter how I deliver the pizza, as long as I deliver it, people are going to be happy to see me. You know what I mean? You can, you can pick the mushrooms off of a pizza, but you can't pick the mushrooms off of a bad joke. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, extra cheesy pizza is fantastic, extra cheesy joke, not so much. So that's, uh, that's a little bit about what I'm worried about, but that's just because I'm a really kind of awkward person. Um, I'm really awkward just in general, that's my, my whole life is just awkward. Even if you start a conversation with me, you know, hey Mark, you know, how are you? Not much. Damn. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I don't know how to behave either, you know, I, I always find myself in some kind of situation where it's totally not the, the right way to act. I am, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm, you know, I was at Starbucks the other day, right, and usually when I go to Starbucks I get a tall coffee, you know, a tall, so that, that's, they don't, they don't do small, medium, large because they want you to think you're buying more than you really are. So you get a tall drink. Um, and the Starbucks that I went to, there was a midget working behind the counter. I cannot make this up. Uh, I, wish, I wish I was, but this legitimately happened. Um, there was a midget working behind the counter, and I was really uncomfortable with this because I wanted to order a tall drink, but I didn't want this guy to be offended that I was ordering a tall drink from a midget. I didn't want to, I didn't want to take it personally. Um, so I, I ended up just walk, I ended up going to Cinnabon, which is even worse. But, um, yeah, so those are just the kinds of things that happened to me. Yet it's amazing to me how much time that we, put in, that we put thought into thinking about what other people are thinking about us, when really all they're doing is thinking about what we're thinking about them. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm sitting in the stall in a public restroom, right, and I know the person that comes in the door, I start freaking out, you know, what if they recognize my shoes? They're gonna know that I'm in here. You know, it's, it's, my, it's, that's what I think about constantly. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm driving behind somebody and I'm making just coincidentally all the same turns, you know, I've gone, like, they make a right, I make a right, they go straight, I go straight, I actually have to start uh, putting my signals on like 20 minutes in advance just so they don't think that I'm following them. Because I think that they're thinking that I'm following them and I'm going to like chase them home or something like that. Really hurt. <laughs> um, you know, and I, I try really hard to work on it. I try really hard not to be so awkward in life. But it's really difficult because I've been awkward my whole life. Even as a little kid, I was in school. And I'm sure uh, anybody who was in classes with me can attest to this. If I ever finish a, uh, if I ever finish a test first in class, I would, I would sit at my desk and I would pretend to check my answers and wait for somebody else to be done so nobody else would think that I'm, oh, I'm the nerd who finished first. Um, so that was, yeah, Mrs. Clavins could probably attest to that, my first grade teacher. <laughs> was I like that? Um, you know, funny uh, that we're talking a little bit about uh, my life in elementary school because I, I remember so clearly because I was always such a teacher's pet, I was always the suck up in class, I was always the brown noser, that one time we were doing some kind of project and it, we had to cut this construction paper and we used safety scissors. Does anybody remember safety scissors? They're little plastic scissors that can't, you can't cut anything with them. You can hold them up to your neck, it wouldn't even be a scratch on there. But you know, for safety reasons, when we were done with the project, the teacher had to lock up the safety scissors in the desk drawer, just so nobody could, you know, get get a hold of them and do anything dangerous. She would lock up the safety scissors, but then in the back of the room there was that portable guillotine that she used to cut paper. <laughs> you can behead a cow with that thing, but it's the safety scissors that the teacher had to wear about walking. <laughs> I don't know what the thought process was there, but um, yeah, that, I mean that was back in elementary school. I mean it's been it's been a little bit of, uh, of time since I've been in elementary school. Uh, more recently, I just graduated from college. I, uh, oh, yeah. uh, college, um, college changed a lot for me. I uh, I had to pick a career path, which I you know I still haven't done, and I've been out of school for a year. So that's 
you know, not, not doing so great there. But I did manage to graduate with my uh, four-year degree in IT and information technology. Um, so being technologically savvy has its ups and downs, right? So the downside of being technologically savvy is that I am now instantly technical support for my family, no matter what. Um, I would actually, I would be in school, and I would, like, I'd get a, I wouldn't hear from my family for weeks at a time. Finally get a phone call one night from my mom. I don't get, you know, oh, hey, how, how are classes going? Are you making friends? How's, you know, your teachers and everything like that? No, I get, hey, Mark, I'm having a problem with my iPad. Can you help me fix it? And I'm like, I'm fine, Mom. How are you? Do you uh, have any more kids while I was talking? <laughs> But uh, yeah, my family is so awful with technology. It actually, it got to the point one time I had to actually ask a relative of mine to fax me something because I had left a, a paper at their house. And I, I called them up and I said, hey, can you fax me this paper? So they ended up, after you know two hours of talking to them on the phone about how to fax something, uh, they ended up faxing it to me and then they called me back up and they said, hey, could you fax that back? That's my only copy. <laughs> I don't even know how they thought that it worked. Like, I don't know, some little magic fairy takes the paper and zooms it over. I don't know what it's so that's, that's what I have to... I mean, and then when I get home, you know, I, I, mean, I, it's, I get to help everybody with the technology in the house. But really, it's like, it's like asking a mailman to go for a walk after his shift. It's like, can I just sit down and be a person for two seconds without having to fix your computer? Um, on the plus side of it, though, I have a really cool job. I work for Apple. Um, and thank you for yes, I am. A, I work for the Apple Store in uh, Edison, down in Menlo Park. Um, you know, it's it's really neat working for Apple. A lot of a lot of times you hear, oh, it must be awesome getting to work with all the computers and playing with the iPads all day. It must be great, you know, meeting all the you know, the other employees that work in the store. Yeah, fine, they're they're cool. My favorite part, personally is the people who come in to buy stuff from me. Um, just the other day, this uh, this guy came in. There was this old, old man. Like, I, I, I had no idea that there was even as much time as this guy was old. Uh, he didn't even go for a thing. That's what he looked like. Um, so he, came, he comes in like, please, I need typewriter ribbon. I need typewriter ribbon. And I'm like, where do you think we have typewriters in the Apple store? We don't, we don't sell that. And he was like, well, maybe in some, maybe somebody in back has. I could just you, I could borrow. I think he wanted to borrow typewriter ribbon. Right um, now, here's something to keep in mind. The person that he was asking for help, like, he didn't, he came to me second. Somebody else actually got to see this guy first. And this poor girl, I don't even think she was alive yet when typewriters were common, commonly used. So I, did, I, was, I was curious, I, decided to, I walked over to a computer with him, I wanted to look up online where you could even buy typewriter ribbon, and you can't buy it anywhere except online. Those two pieces of technology completely cancel each other out. Yeah. Anybody, anybody who needs typewriter ribbon does not know how to use the internet. Anybody who knows how to use the internet has never heard of a typewriter. So it's, it's, it's weird to me that that exists. Uh, working for the Apple store, I mean, working for Apple, it hasn't been all bad. Um, I, the last, actually, the last three girls that I've dated, uh, I met at work. Um, which, I mean, it's, it's kind of cool, but on the other hand, it's kind of sad if you think about it, because I don't know what I'm doing at work, but it's certainly not working for me if I go out to a bar or something like that. Like, just uh, last week, I was at a, at a bar with a couple friends of mine, and I was trying to, you know, meet a couple people. I spend the entire night working really hard trying to meet people, and the longest conversation I have with a woman is when my mom called. I must be doing something wrong. I try to make up for it, though. I try to. I try really hard. I try to be polite. I, one girl, you know, was walking past me, and I decided, all right, well, let me let me grab the door. I'll, I'll hold the door open. As she walks by, I'm holding the door open to the men's room. <laughs> too much. Too much. Too much. I can't even handle it. Um, you know, I, I did recover though. I thought about a really, like, a really smooth thing to say. Ten seconds after she walked away, so I couldn't even, couldn't even recover from it. Um, you know, then I finally work up the courage to, you know, go up to somebody and, hey, can I buy you a drink? My debit card gets declined. So right off the bat, I'm, I'm just, I'm zero percent right now. It's just terrible. Um, and it's, it's really sad because I don't really have much going for me either. I don't work out. I don't lift weights. I don't do any of that. Um, my friends actually ask me about it, they're like, why don't, why don't you want to work out? Don't you want to feel good when you go to the gym? Like, I feel awful when I go to the gym. There's too many people that are in shape when I go to the gym. I go to McDonald's, I feel great. <laughs> There's plenty of people, yeah, yeah but they're like, uh, Mark, I think you really, you really need to get in shape. Oh, round is a shape. <laughs> it is, look it up. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, that's... 
what, so whatever charm I may or may not have, somehow um, it, it's worked at the Apple store. So I actually had one of my customers I actually sold her an iPhone. She went home, she looked me up on Facebook, and she, had, she sent me a friend request. And I'm, I'm pretty excited about this because so far, none of my actual effort has been working, but this, this person just randomly decided to find me on Facebook. So I'm like, all right, let me go check out her profile page. I go to type her name into Facebook and accidentally set her name as my status. Yeah. <laughs> so now that's super embarrassing and she hasn't talked to me since then. So that's yeah, you can see I'm, I'm really good at this, I know. Um, if anybody has any pointers, I'd be happy to, uh, to hear them. That would be, that'd be fantastic. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much the trouble that I go through. I mean, it, which, it's really pathetic if you think about it that way because as great as I am with technology, I'm still really awkward with it. Like that happened on Facebook. Um, if, I'm, if I'm texting somebody, I, I'll, I use I use LOL very frequently. I know it's you know the, the kids these days, you know LOL, YOLO, whatever. Um, I use LOL at the beginning of a text, and then I'm freaking out like, oh well, now I, I can't use it again. Now I have to use haha at the end of the text. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it's it's really kind of it's really kind of sad. As, as great as I am with technology. Um, you know, I, I can't even seem to use it to benefit myself. So, um, I mean, other than that, um, I think I'm. I mean, I'm, th I'm doing pretty well. I mean, so I'll tell you a little bit more about myself really quickly. Um, I uh, I live at home. I live with my parents. Uh, not just with my parents, but in my parents' basement, ladies. Um, <laughs> if I. It's, it's interesting living, uh, living back with my parents after getting home from school because while I was in college, I lived on my own, which was great because it was my first time, it was my first time being in my own place since the womb, and it was awesome. But you never, you never really realize what you don't have in your place until you bring a girl over. Like I had a girl over at my room one time, and she was like, do you have moisturizer? And I was like, you, mean, you mean water? What about, what about hand sanitizer? Do you have hand sanitizer? I have soap. Is that is that going to be good enough? Is soap okay? <laughs> but you know, point being, I I really need to get my own place. I need to find my own place. Um, a couple friends of mine have already moved on with their lives. They're full grown adults you now. They have their own apartments and they're in the city and stuff. And they tell me stories about all these amazing fun times that they're having uh, living on their own in the city. And whenever I hear these awesome stories, I get kind of jealous and I go and I uh, you know I, I go tell other people. But instead of telling it about them, I pretend that it happened to me and I tell people that I actually lived it, but then being the awkward person that I am, I forget who told me it originally, and I'll end up telling the person that told me the story in the first place. And then they're like, well, that, that didn't happen to you, that happened to me. And then I'm just stuck in that terrible position. As, um, as fun as this has been, I, uh, I think I hear um, somebody calling my name over here. I think that's about all the time that I have. But uh, right before I go, I do have one more group that I'd like to introduce. We couldn't quite get the Rolling Stones, but we do have the Rosenstones, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for uh, 